What's the message you're trying to send out this week? I think the overarching message this week is that um, we as a community have suffered a great loss. And, you know, we've had three homicide victims uh, this week, one being a 13-year-old, which is extremely uh, heartbreaking and really hits home for a lot of a lot of us in the community. It also hits officers pretty hard too because a lot of officers that work those calls have young uh, kids and have kids the same age. So it's very difficult. So I guess the overarching message is really um, we as a community need to find a way to prevent these type of tragedies. You don't usually put out statements publicly. Uh, what made this situation different? This one, because the the the, the um, I think maybe the age of the victim, and then the, just the way we had the the cases so close together. You know, the incidents are so close together, and then we look at the national picture, and we see that these type of crimes are in, on the increase all across the country, and so is there is there something we can do here at Topeka to stop that prevent that slow that down or whatever that's that's i kind of i think that's what drove that message this time was um and then the age of the victim had a lot to do with it and not just the age of the victim but then it was the mother daughter and so i think that was a lot of the motivation for that um so the uh you guys have solved the one the 66 year old who was shot on Monday? That was a drive-by. Was no, it was a it was a uh, argument between known individuals. Okay, uh, what can you say publicly about the other double homicide? Whether it was known people or unknown, or if you even have an idea. Well, the uh, double homicide. There's a lot of things that we're following up on, and uh, this is one of those uh, investigations that has some nuances to it. And so there's a lot of things that we have to really vet out before we can say much on. Um, but we are following the leads as they come in. And, and this is also one of those that we are really asking for the public's help. If you know anything or have heard anything. And uh, uh, again, it, it could be in your mind, nothing major, but for us it could be so. Mm -hmm. um, and you can, you know, get us information by, uh, Sending an email to uh, telltpd at topeka.org, that's a real easy way. You can, and that way you don't have to have, real, have contact or anything if you don't want to. Or you can call Crime Stoppers. Um, so there's a couple of avenues and outlets in which you, know, you can provide information. You were on the department when the homicide record was set, first with 28 in 1994 and then with 30 in 2017. Do you see this as potentially being that type of year? Uh, unfortunately, the way the numbers are going, I would say yes, because we are already at the same number that we had last year. Um, and so that's why I think it's extremely important that we try to do some preventive stuff. Uh, one of the things that I'm very excited about is we're getting ready to roll out the SAVE program uh, with the Center for, Topeka, uh, uh, Center for Topeka Peace and Justice. And that was a program that was really kind of initiated by the, the jump. And uh, we've got that put together. Uh, the DA went in front of the uh, county commissioners asking for funding to fund the coordinator position for that. And so um, we've had a lot of support from the Community Foundation. And so we're very excited about that. But that's a program I think that um, has a lot of, lot of potential in maybe uh, reducing future crimes. What would you tell the normal average person on the street that they can do? Well, the average person, again, um, out and about, if they see something, you know, let us know. Uh, we have tremendous um, response from our community. Uh, when we ask for help, we get it. And I think a lot of that has to do with, say, you know, the fiber at Topeka as well as the um, community engagements that we've established over the last couple of years, I think really helps a lot with that. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that one of the other paradigms that we really got to focus on and, and try to break is over 40 percent of our shooting victims that survive refuse to cooperate. And most of those individuals know who the perpetrator was. What makes that important is that 
by refusing to be a victim or refusing to cooperate, you're allowing that person to still be out there. And usually that those individuals have the potential for violence. They've already shown it. And a lot of times those lead to more serious type situations. Uh, or in other cases, those victims that refuse to cooperate try to take matters into their own hands. And that creates a whole other situation. And in both of those scenarios, bad things usually happen. Um, do you keep up with the stats pretty good? I keep up with the homicides. I don't really pay much attention to the shootings. Are, how are the shootings? Well, actually, our shootings are down uh, through the end of June. Our shootings are down from where they were last year. Um, so, you know, the uh, it, it's hard to say why the homicide numbers are up while well, the shootings are down, but we've also had some homicides this year that were not done with firearms, and so that uh, adds into that as well. And so, yeah, uh, statistics are statistics, though, you know, but what they do show is a trend line on, you know, the things that you can get in front of or whatever. So that's why it's important to look at the numbers and keep them very accurate and up to date because if you can notice something, if you can notice a trend, then you know, how do you prevent it or what can you do to prevent it or what can you do to try to reduce it? During times of high homicide rates, people sometimes became afraid that of even going outside. Um, but actually most homicide victims are shot by someone they know. Is this accurate? Uh, in the city of Topeka, almost all of our homicides have a relationship to where they know somebody. It's not random acts of violence. Um, so in one aspect, that's really good. The other aspect is uh, one of the things that we talk about and we hear a tremendous amount from the public is de-escalation training for law enforcement. But what we really need is de-escalation training for our community. We need to learn, we need to teach people how to de-escalate in everyday life. How do you de-escalate the, the uh, argument, the situation, or whatever that they get into? And so what we really need to try to find a way is how to de-escalate, uh, how do we get our citizens and our community to understand de-escalation and how do they utilize de-escalation? Because I think that's really important. One of the things in society, and maybe it's a macho thing, but people don't like to step down. They don't like to step back. They don't like to... Um, be the one to walk away but when we talk about life or death situations that are evolving out of these type of situations we, we have to understand that that is an option and it's, that doesn't mean you're less of a person if you walk away or you disengage um, and so how do we get people to understand that part of that starts you know with young people and stuff like that but it's also you know the general public also needs to learn how to de-escalate Anything else you want to say? Um, I, I just, I want the community to know that this is a safe place to live. And again, when we talk about these situations, they're all seem to be driven by a couple factors, you know, uh, some type of relationship there, whether it be a domestic or friendships or whatever. And then a lot of our situations also involve uh, illegal narcotics. And so those are two driving factors that, you know, we work on pretty hard, um, you know, but we talk about domestic violence and we talk about domestic violence and we have organizations that are out there to help reduce it and prevent it but we as a community have to do better on how we develop relationships one of the things i think that young people they they view relationships by what they see and that's their their knowledge base and so i don't think we as a society do a very good job of showing young people what a good healthy relationship looks like and so, you know, those are some of the things I think we as a community maybe kind of look at. How, how do we put programs together? How do we put mentors together? How do we engage those young people that, you know, because I think young people enter into more serious relationships at a younger age now than in the past. And there's a variety of reasons for that. But with that being said, we just take it for granted that we know how relationships work. But we all know if you've been in a, a relationship, you're married or whatever, it takes work. It takes fundamentals. It takes skills to make things uh, successful. And so I think we really need to, uh, our community, if we could do it, and 
we'd probably be one of the first ones in, in, in the area or maybe the country if we really came up with a comprehensive uh, program on what relationships look like and, and we're able to get that to young people, then uh, I think we'd have a lot of success.